If you're interested in attending Catholic worship, come consider the 10 o'clock a.m. Mass at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located just four blocks up from Soldiers Field Road at 43 Holton Street. You can check out our website at stanthonyalston.org. That's stanthonyalston.org. And come to the 10 o'clock Mass and experience our chanted Liturgy of the Eucharist every Sunday. Let us offer our con consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we continue through the second week of Easter. Let us be filled with your spirit and let us grow in faith to come to know you more. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today, of course, is Wednesday of the second week of Easter. We're looking at Acts 5. We're looking at the first reading. I I guess I forgot to mention the past two days. Don't forget to check your daily readings, which you can find in your daily missile. You may find it on the web at bible.usccb.org, or you may have uh, a subscription to like Magnificat or The Word Among Us or uh, some of the other uh, out there. And there are also bound versions that you can uh, purchase from various places, including online. And the bound verses give you the weekly readings, the, the daily readings every week, and also the weekly readings for Sundays. And usually they're two different books. One is Sunday, one is the daily, but they're both uh, highly recommended. So I don't read the readings uh, on uh, uh, on the program, and there's two reasons for that. One is time, and the other is copyright issues. So anyway, we are looking at Acts 5, 7, 17 through 26, and there's something that really needs to be understood here, and it's something that as I'm looking it over before I did the show, I'm kind of like, oh, oh, I never noticed that. And you know, you, that happens all the time when it comes to the Bible. You never notice that. So the story is that the uh, high priest and the Sadducees and maybe the Sanhedrin and everything else, they're really getting tired of the apostles preaching the word. So they're really getting tired of this, and they want to want them to stop. So what they do is they arrest them, they put them in prison, but during the night, an angel comes along and unlocks the prison door and lets them out. Now you might say, well, okay, but here is what happens. The reason why I say that is they put them in the prison but the next morning, they're out preaching. Now, and so, well, how'd you get out? Well, an angel came. Well, okay, well, well, we'll deal with that. Okay. So the whole reality is, notice what I just said. This powerful act happens. They can't, the, the Pharisees and the high priests and the prison guards and no one else can explain how it is that the apostles are still not in prison, yet here they are out, they're free, and they start preaching the word. They can't arrest them again because the people are going to flip and they're going to stone them. So living in fear of that, because it's obviously not a popular action, but notice, this thing I noticed before I I read this, uh, no one repents. None of those people, none of those people say, well, hey, you know, we really can't explain why this happened. And all they're doing is preaching the gospel, which we don't understand yet because we don't understand this Jesus yet because we're still trying to figure that all out. And they decide they're going to preach the gospel and they preach the gospel and... That could mean that what they're saying is true, but we're not going to accept that. Nope, 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 nope. See, notice there's no repentance there. None. And that's, I mean, think of that if you were in that position and all of a sudden you start to see that happening. Now, let me give you a good example, right? He sometimes makes, for some people, controversial statements, And if you know anything about him, that he and Dan Bongino uh, sometimes exchange words on Twitter. And who is he? He's Stephen King. 
Stephen King wrote that great story, The Green Mile. Now, let me tell you something about Stephen King. Say anything you want about Stephen King. He is one guy who has always encouraged people to write and always wrote encouraging words about writing. I grew up in a time, you know, I love writing. I grew up at a time where everyone said, don't try to be a writer. You can't do what I do because I'm so much better than everyone else. That's literally what people would say all the time. They would tell you, you can't be a writer, but I can. And Stephen King was one of the first people I ever read who said, no, I want to encourage you in his books. Wonderful guy. I've never met him, but through his writings, I've read him. So you may disagree with him politically. You may not like some of the stuff he says on Twitter, but for those people who write, Stephen King's a wonderful guy. And he wrote uh, The Green Mile. And what happens in The Green Mile is a story of miracles. It's also about judgment, a story of miracles, and it changes people's hearts. Do you understand that? He takes a lot of stories uh, and it changes people's hearts. The, the characters' hearts are changed because they see miracles. Now, you compare, I bet you I'm one, one of the few people ever use Stephen King to talk about the book of Acts or the gospel. So you go back to the Acts of the Apostle uh, apostles and you see granted this is he, he writes fiction and this is based on an actual story but you see these people see this miracle happen and they don't change their hearts become hardened that's intensely important to see because they have determined to silence this message they have determined to uh to silence what the apostles are preaching and they don't see flipping it to the other side saying how is this happening maybe they are speaking the truth ultimately there is a saying that we see where i think it was caiaphas turns around or someone stands up i'll have to look it up it stands up and says look if this isn't of god it's going to die out and they finally back off somewhat but you see this powerful moment this powerful reality that here you see that this miracle happens and the people who are hard-hearted become even more hard-hearted really intense so anyway just remember we have a, a 10 o'clock a.m mass every sun every sunday and you are invited to that mass so please consider coming to it if you'd like we're here at 43 holton street alston massachusetts 02134 and if you say well i, I don't know i don't i don't want to go and then what do i do when the collection basket comes by and i haven't put anything in the collection basket what if people are looking at me well they're not by the way but very simple write the word radio down on a piece of paper and put that in the collection that's all you don't have to put any money just put that in because you're trying to experience what it means to be in saint anthony parish so remember this goes for for you if you don't belong to another parish if you already do then your your or church for that matter your loyalty is is in christ through that parish but if you're looking for a place maybe you want to start coming back to church Hey, this is the place to do it. Write the word radio down on a piece of paper at the 10 o'clock a.m. mass, and that is our chanted mass, so please consider this. Well, it is a very powerful story we're looking at today, and again, what you see is that no one is converted among those who have turned from Christ, but what we see something else is that God's work is being done. Now, the high priests at the time, uh, the Sadducees, the the Pharisees, the whole the Sanhedrin, none of them could understand the bigger picture because they're all around in it. But we can look back and we can see the bigger picture. And as I said uh, on Monday, the whole world changes when. Mary says yes to the angel Gabriel. The whole world changes, but no one was going to know that at the time. But we can look back and we can see the radical change that happens in the world. Now, let me throw something else onto this. We saw that God's plan is happening. And I talked on Monday how we can see that God's plan is happening. And we can understand that we, we can go back and look at the entire history through the scriptures and everything else, and we can see that there is a pattern that follows, that God's plan happens very slowly, but it happens. Now, let me throw something out 
to you to help you understand that not only do we see this happening, but we understand what they don't. So we can look back and say that they were trying to stop a movement that could not be stopped very powerfully. It was God's will that this whole reality with Christianity grows and spreads throughout the world. It was God's plan that the Jews are for the Hebrews at that time are freed from Egypt. It was God's will that the uh, promised land was established and people returned to it under Moses. It, all this is God's plan and it all happens, but people couldn't understand that fully at the time. But we can look back and we can see where prophecy has come true. We can see where all this has come true and we can say, yes, God's plan is going to happen. Now, does that mean that there'll be a second coming? Yes. Um, could people have described, well, for example, in the time of ex Isaiah, exactly what was going to happen in the coming of Jesus Christ? No, but they knew that something was going to happen and they knew that there was going to be a Messiah. So they could see a lot of that coming together. Uh, do we understand that there will be a second coming without question? Absolutely. And that's what we're focused on. The, absolutely. But we're waiting to see how that is going to come true. Is there a way to prevent it from happening? No, not that we'd want to do that, but no, because we can look back and see God's plan is happening and nothing could stop it. And as much as the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin and the Sadducees and everything wanted to do everything they could to stop it, couldn't be done. There's just no way. And we know God's will will be done. We're going to talk more tomorrow. In the meantime, have yourself a blessed day and we will see you then. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. Remember, when you're looking for a place to attend Mass, and if you don't already attend Mass at your local parish, come to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located at 43 Holton Street in Alston, just a few blocks up from Soldiers Field Road. And you can check us out. Come to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass and come to experience our Catholic worship at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts.